I played Path of Exile to see if it was worth playing in 2023. Here's what I found out. I love that feeling when you start a new MMO, or really any RPG for that matter. The beginning of a journey, a world to explore, and a character's potential to discover. But I also like being a bit overwhelmed by the game and the systems that I don't quite understand about it just yet. And I have never been more overwhelmed than I have been with Path of Exile. I started my journey as a Templar on the shores of Rayclast, exiled and shipwrecked. I was very wet. And after killing some filthy heretic zombies, I died in the early stages. You can't beat me, spiders. I have 5 million power in Rise of Kingdoms. So the game does indeed have good difficulty. Nice! And that is when I saw it. Now before I can tell you what IT is, I need to explain what leagues are. When you start Path of Exile, you can pick if you want to start the default game mode or play in the current league which contains all the content of the default game mode plus an extra challenge mode that changes every few months or so. The current league is Sanctum, a roguelike experience with some absolutely insane enemies and bosses. All based around Resolve, a resource unique to Sanctum that you lose when you get hit, but it doesn't refill normally like health. If it's depleted, you die, so you have to avoid getting hit at all costs. Back to the game. I saw my first Sanctum entrance, and boy oh boy that difficulty leap is real. When you enter a league, there is no sugarcoating. I was only a few minutes into the game, when I realized that it doesn't care that I'm a new player with a new character, I failed so many times, Sanctum after Sanctum, miserably, and it was glorious. Of course you do get the hang of it eventually. Now this game has a very bland progression system with a very straightforward skill tree. <sighs> yeah. And the skill tree isn't the only progression system in the game. Not by far. But the progression system does actually make sense, it's actually pretty logical. In terms of the skill tree, the class that you pick determines where you start on the tree, then you can make your way to all these little sub-trees that contain different passive upgrades for your magic, fighting, minions, etc. You can mix and match to your liking, it's one of the most customizable games you'll ever see. I found myself lost in the cool and sometimes even game-changing upgrades on it. This is the most tree-like skill tree I've ever seen, it takes the expression branching out very literally. I decided to go for a tanky summoner elementalist build because I wanted to be a heavy armor wearing zombie summoning frost hammer wielding death knight from the Warcraft universe. But later on I decided to go for a general elementalist because I found a cool fire spell and ended up getting a lot of passive lightning damage on my gear. Speaking of gear, gear determines the abilities your character has. Unlike your typical RPG, items have a certain number of sockets. These sockets are a particular color and some of them are linked to each other. You can get these skill gems that give you an ability by putting the gem in the matching colored socket, and if the sockets are linked to each other, you can put a support gem in the other sockets that either buff or sometimes even outright change the way that the ability works. As you play the game, it gets easier to acquire items that let you change your gear's sockets and links, but also with stats and rarity, so the gear is also very customizable. Although once you've customized a piece of gear and put so much into it, it gets hard to replace it when you find an upgrade because you have to customize it all over again, otherwise it's not actually actually an upgrade, but hoarding items until you fully modify them isn't really a problem because you have a lot of free inventory space, and if you don't want to do it yourself, you can always just trade with other players. When it comes to interacting with other players, this game is mostly a single player game with online elements, but you can actually invite your friends to join your party. The combat is one of the better combat systems I've seen in ARPGs, bosses have mechanics you have to avoid, telegraphed high damaging attacks, stuff not to stand in, it also gets more and more intense the further you get into the game. By the way, if you recognized any of those memes, it means that, like me, 
You're f***ing old. I like how some of the unique items in this game can change your build significantly. Like this necklace that I found gives my summons a big cold damage buff, but it makes them only able to do cold damage. And then there's the corrupted gems. Oh baby, the corrupted gems. If you explore the map, sometimes you'll find these corrupted areas that drop said gems, and these are basically a version of the normal gems but on steroids. Now I wanna be honest. Some of these gems, like other things in Path of Exile, are so powerful, they basically just let you not play the game. For example, I replaced my Summon Skeleton's ability with the Corrupted version, which gives me the same ability, but with a small buff. However, it also gives me the Vol version of that spell, which costs souls. You gain souls as you fight, so it's not some crazy resource that you need to farm. The Vol version of a spell is the same spell, but as I said, on steroids. In this case, instead of just summoning two skeletons at a time with swords, you summon an entire army of skeletons, some with swords, some with bows, some with magic, and a giant skeleton general that has different gear and abilities each time you spawn him. Corrupted gems are very fun. One thing that you could call a con is the fact that you'll probably end up looking at a good bit of YouTube videos and online guides in order to fully grasp the game considering it's so complex. Although this could be a positive depending on whether or not you like complex games. I could suck a dick and it wouldn't be gay. But Bebop, what, what, what about the cash shop? This game has a cash shop. Path of Exile is a free game, so yeah, it does have a cash shop. The items are purely cosmetic, and the pricing is very clear. One dollar equals ten points. None of that where you have to buy 450 gems for a buck ninety-nine, so you have no idea how much the in-game items are actually worth. Nothing in the shop costs anything weird like 202 points or something. No matter how many points you buy, you always end up spending all of them. You don't end up with a random number of points left like 7 that you can't refund. And if you don't want to pay, you can easily play this game without spending a single penny. But you're not gonna look as cool. PoE has awesome character customization, great abilities, and engaging gameplay. So is it worth playing in 2023? I would say yeah, absolutely, especially if you haven't played it before. You see this? This is the greatest video ever made on YouTube. Go watch it.